Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to be talking about masking our character to get different results. So this on the screen right now we have the character that we created in our Creating a Simple Freebone Character tutorial. And what I'm going to do is take it right into Composer Mode because we're going to talk about uh, masking. Composer Mode is up here on the top. And with my character selected, you can see we have an option here to load up the mask editor. So masking is generally what you want to do when you want to remove certain parts of your character's mesh and uh, not have them visible. All right, so here is our mask editor that pops up. Then we have some simple control tools, our pan tool right here. We can click and drag around, pan like this. We can also zoom out, zoom in, and this one is uh, actual size for image, which is very close to the fit to window. All right, so if we you know zoom out, we can also fit it to window just like that. All right, and if you have a, those are the basic control tools. If you have a brush selected, you can also hold the alt key and click and drag, left click and drag, and that'll uh, pan your image as well. And you can scroll your mouse button in, scroll your mouse button out to zoom in and out as well. So, I mean, those are hotkeys, more useful than coming up here and clicking these, uh, to be honest, but uh, to each their own. All right, so brush will allow you, you can see it's a transparent PNG, and our back, our back, or our masking color is kind of like a, uh, a light kind of blue here. Um, and you can change that color. You can change the opacity down here if you want it to be like a darker blue like that. Uh, we can also change it to, uh, you know, let's change it to a bright red for, for this example here. All right, we can pump up that opacity like this. So it's very, very high contrast from the actual character itself, which is generally what you want if you are masking out uh, certain body parts. All right, so we have the brush right here. Brush is your typical brush, okay? So you, um, and you click and drag and you can mask out certain parts of your body. So all the stuff that I'm painting over red right now will not show up in my final image. All right, I can control Z and undo that. And uh, for the brush, we can change the size. All right, so you can see the size adjusting right there. Pretty straightforward if you're familiar with uh, photo editing software like Photoshop. Um, the hardness, uh, you can see if I brush right here, there's gonna be sort of a faded edge along the brush right there. If I increase the hardness, then we're gonna have a straight. Okay, so really sharp edge like that. So very simple, uh, less uh, less hardness. You can see there'll be you know more of a fade on your actual masking. And the strength, uh, if we take down the strength, for example, um, if we can uh, just click and drag like that, and it'll create a nice sort of fade like that. So say for example, we want to fade this part up here. Let's actually just erase this uh, all for now. I'm going to increase the size of my eraser and, and the hardness because we're going to erase everything um, and the strength. So we're going to maximize the er eraser power. All right, so um, say, for example, I wanted this uh, scarecrow to have sort of a ghost-like uh, lower body. Well, to do that, I can just you know use my brush. Um, let's use a lower size here. Um, change the hardness to something mid-range. And let's just uh, kind of paint the bottom just like this. We still have the strength at 100. All right, so we have that nice kind of fade. Uh, we can decrease the hardness even further and just kind of do something like this. And then we can, you know, take the strength all the way down to something pretty low. Um, maybe increase the hardness a little bit and just kind of paint for that area right there. Okay. Maybe a couple times, a few times. And um, what we're going to have in this case, we can probably erase a little bit of that top there. Just fade it in nicely right there. All right. So we're going to have in this case, if I uh, exit my mask editor, you can see we're going to have a kind of a ghost-like lower body right there. All right, so the, basically the masking is just masking out uh, certain geometry on your layer right there, okay, and, or a certain part of your image. So let's go back into our masking tool here, and let's just erase all that nonsense. You can see it reverts back to a blue color. We can just simply, zoop, we want you red, all right, and let's pump up the strength or the uh, the size, the hardness and the strength, and just erase all this nonsense right there. We want him to be a full-bodied scarecrow. All right. You also have the option here for a lasso tool. Just like in Photoshop, if we decrease the size, say, for example, we wanted him to have a hole in his chest. Well, we can just lasso that hole by, you know, doing something like this. Make sure the ends are connected just like this. So he's the scarecrow without a heart. Or maybe someone shot him and he's a scarecrow ghost or something like that. And that's going to result in him having a hole in his chest. All right. That's your lasso tool. And there's also the color uh, select by color tool as well. Let's just erase this uh, bad boy right here. There we go. And there's a select by color. And when you select that option, there's a tolerance right here as well. 
Um, so if I have a very low tolerance and I select, you know, this section right here, it's going to select this lower part. I can select this over here. It's going to select, oops, actually I selected all the black there. Uh, maybe down here. There we go. And you can see it's very picky about, uh, you know, which parts it selects. Okay. And if we erase all that, let's do that. Let's go ahead and uh, try color selection with a higher tolerance. So maybe something like 80. If we do that, select 80, you can see maybe the tolerance is uh, way too high. So we can just control Z that. Uh, a lower tolerance will be more accurate. A higher tolerance will be decidedly less accurate there. Um, 80 seems to be the sweet spot. If we take it down to like 64, for example, you know, it'll just select similar colors if they're adjacent to it. Uh, this one here, here's a good example. Right over here, you know, it'll select that entire thing. Whereas if we control Z and undo that, we lower that tolerance there. You know, it's going to be uh, just these two sections here and it won't select that one. All right, so, you know, lower tolerance is just generally more accurate. Pretty straightforward stuff. We'll just erase everything here. We don't want a uh, scarecrow that's only half there. In addition to that, we also have the feather option as well. So feather is pretty simple. If you want to, uh, you know, say I had my strength and hardness all the way up and I wanted to recreate that effect that I had before with the ghost lower body right there. If I do this and I go ahead and feather it, it'll give me an option to, uh, you know, feather the selection area just like this. You can see right there we still get that uh, kind of fade right there and now we can contract or expand that just like that and we you know we'd probably have a very similar result if we just feathered it. So that's kind of feathering. I'm just going to cancel that because we don't really want that right now and uh, let's just zoop, restore his uh, body right there. And I forgot to mention you can also clear. So instead of erasing I could have just you know cleared that entire section right there. So let's draw it again just for demonstration purposes and then clear it. It'll clear all that stuff that we, all the masking that we created. All right. So now in addition to that, we also have uh, the inverse mask. Okay. Down here. So if I use my, uh, say for example, we let's recreate that hole in the chest thing. Um, say for example, we didn't want him to have a hole in his chest. Instead, we just wanted a hole with no body. Well, in that case, we can invert the selection, inverse the mask right there, and we'll only have this section right here. All right. We can uh, click that again and it'll restore that. And then we can just go ahead and uh, clear it. And there's also an option down here at the bottom to show reference point. And that's just going to basically show you uh, the bone nodes for your character. Um, on the body right here, you can see all these reference points uh, for when we, where we placed bones on our character. Pretty simple, straightforward stuff. Just that show reference point right there. All right, so now in our last tutorial about creating a simple free bone character, we had, I'm just going to close the mask editor down here really quick. What we had is a problem with the head mesh kind of morphing along with the shoulders. So for example, if I go into preview here and I preview my uh, shoulder, you can see it'll kind of stretch out his head like that, which is definitely an unwanted result. I don't think that happens with normal people. With their head morphs along with their uh, shoulder movement. So we want to avoid that. And the way we can do that is by masking out the body and putting the head on a separate layer. So let's go ahead and uh, end the preview mode right here. Let's select bone five, which is the head bone here. And what I'm going to do is duplicate this layer, okay? And it'll say successfully added layer. Do you wish to edit the mask for the newly added layer? Let's go ahead and press yes. All right, and you can see now we have bone layer five. Now what we want to do here is we want to actually mask out the body on this bone layer five because this is going to be our head layer, all right? So let's just go ahead and uh, I'm going to just use my mouse here to kind of just go along the bottom here. I'm using a mouse, so bear with me. It's not going to be amazingly accurate. Well, let's just do the best we can. All right, that looks okay. And then let's mask out the rest of the body as well. Very simple procedure for the rest of it. Let's just drag my mouse all over the place. All right, so we've masked out that uh, head right there. And you can see the thumbnail change over here to only show the head. Now, if I close down the mask editor and I select my head and I, you know, move it around like that, there we go. That's kind of what we want right there. Uh, the head on a separate layer, but we still have that head underneath. So all we need to do to fix that is uh, with our bone layer five selected there, the uh, head, let's go ahead and load up the mask editor one more time. And what I'm going to do is just go ahead and select remove background. And that's going to remove my character's body background. You can see that our, the head kind of shows up like that, a little bit larger again, and the body is suddenly missing a head because we removed the uh, background there. All right. 
Uh, so let's go ahead and close on the mask editor and take a look at the final example. There we go. All right, so we have the, uh, you see, no, 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 no. All right, we have the head on a separate layer. We can move it around like this in a ghost-like way. If we want to edit the position of it, you know, say, for example, we don't like the, uh, the neck going that far to the side, we can just go to uh, edit pose and then, you know, take the uh, head down a little bit and, you know, permanently place it a little bit lower. And then we can preview like that. And that'll be, you know, the result. Anyways, all right, so that's how you can really uh, avoid that kind of situation where, you know, in particular a character's, a free bone character's head is morphing along with their shoulders and stuff like that. Uh, you can solve that via masking. All right, so that's about all I wanted to show in this tutorial, guys. Again, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoy our CTA3 tutorials. Check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com. And again, I'll see you in the next video.